Hey everyone, welcome to Darkling Alley. I'm Jay, here with Tempest. Hey! And here we are mm-hmm. for Alan Wake Gameplay Episode 4. Yes, and I have something to apologize for. I said that Episode 3 was the longest, and actually it turns out that Episode 4 is just as long. Like, I don't know why, but Episode 3 feels longer to me. So we're breaking this up now into four parts to make it easier to watch. So... We hope you enjoy it. Previously on Alan Wake, I'm hunted by the law. Sheriff, Wake's running. I'm giving chase. Are you seriously telling me that writer just took out my deputies? A thriller I supposedly wrote is coming true. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. (sighs) It's turning into a horror story. I was told that Alice had been kidnapped, but that was a lie. We don't have his wife. We don't know where she is. Her purported (sighs) kidnapper was eaten up by the dark presence before it attacked me. Alan, shh, baby. It was just a nightmare. Alice. There you go, Alan. Hartman, I fell. I had to give you a sedative. Don't fight it. I... You went through another rough period. What? Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. The shock of your wife's death triggered a mental illness. No, you're... you lie. You're suffering from various symptoms of undifferentiated schizophrenia. Bastard. It's okay, okay Alan. No, no. Just, Just let, let go. 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 What is that stuff pouring out of his head? No. It's it a... like <laughs> blood. Yeah, blood or water or something. The rest of them is dry, though. Yeah. I felt groggy. Whatever Hartman had bumped in me was making me numb. I felt like this was happening to someone else. Someone I was watching on television. I couldn't think. Couldn't focus. He got roofied again. There were only empty sheets of paper here. No manuscript pages. <laughs> he can't walk. <laughs> <laughs> He's impaired. Good evening, Alan. Are we feeling better now? Feeling calm? Yeah. I see you brought your pet gorilla with you. So sure, I'm calm. I get the message. Loud and clear. Why, right. That's the spirit? You're being very brave, Alan. I understand you're confused. I would be more concerned if you weren't suspicious of me. I don't blame you for it. Big of you. Now, why don't you come with me? We'll reacquaint you with my clinic and go over everything you might have forgotten. Little walk and some fresh air? Yes, it will do you good. I like Alan's doped up voice. This corridor is for patients. Most of them (laughs) are here right now. Jack took them out for a fishing trip. Except for the ones who are particularly vulnerable, of course. Cool. I'm going into Emerson's room. Oh, he's a fan of Night Springs. Yes. So am I. And Death Rally. (laughs) I've never played. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm a fan anyway. Yeah. I'm a poser. Does that make me a poser? (laughs) Interesting artwork there. Sorry. I I don't know what I saw there. I encourage creativity as a part of the recovery process here at Cauldron Lake Lodge. I specialize in treating artists. I bet you do. Splendid, Alan. I honestly believe we can get this thing under control if we work together. This way, Alan. I wish Alan would talk like this through the whole game. He should. (laughs) I don't know what it is. His dopey voice is awesome. (laughs) 
again, I never focus on anything unless I think it means something. That should remind you of control. It should remind people of control. Are you in control? Now, Alan, from past experience with you, I know I need to get right into the heart of the matter as quickly as I can after an episode. So I'm just going to say this. Alice is dead. No. You're in a very vulnerable state until you understand and accept this. Alice drowned. And you couldn't face that. You're suffering from hallucinations, paranoid delusions, unusual thinking, an obsession about light and darkness, a feeling that everything revolves around you, your thoughts and dreams. Your mind has constructed an elaborate fantasy scenario in which your writings are affecting reality. She has been kidnapped and supernatural forces of darkness are trying to stop you. We go this way, Alan. I wasn't ready for another shot, so I went along with it. He had to be lying, but under the influence of the drug he had given me, I had to fight not to believe his words. It's all in your head. You've been making it up. Apart from the tragic accident with your wife, no one has been killed. Your delusions are just a manifestation of your subconscious mind trying to protect you from the too painful truth. Unless we fight the fantasy, it will return. I know the instinct is to resist me, but think about it. Doesn't this make far more sense than the insane supernatural conspiracy you have concocted in your mind? You're a skeptic by nature, Alan. We both know this. Everything can be explained logically. Alan totally wants to punch him again. Yeah, but he wasn't ready for another shot. <laughs> Um, don't mind the fact that the island is there right now. <laughs> ah, I never get tired of this view. Very inspiring. I don't know why that it? happened. Cauldron Lake spread below us. I could see Mira Peak on the other side of the lake. I thought I could make out the spot where Diver's Isle had been when I arrived with Alice. Now there was nothing but waves. It seems there's a no, storm. I'm trying not coming. to show it. Funny, I don't recall there being a mention of that in the weather forecast. Well, no matter. This way, follow me. I don't know if it's a glitch or something that happens Alan, after we've beaten you the is game. Good news. Right now we're in control. Every time you have a relapse, it gets more and more difficult to resurface from the dark depths of your imagination. Not surprising, considering your profession. Imagination is what you work with. After all your nightmares, this should come as an immense relief to you. If it doesn't, why is that? Because I'm lying? Or because you don't want to admit that you're not well? It's very natural for you to think of me as your enemy. It's part of the I illness. I let him talk. After all, Hartman I'm obviously loved his own voice. His words echoed madly inside my head. But I, can't I dug my nails into myself. the palms of my hands to stay focused. You need to work with me. Once you accept that, we can begin the journey towards your recovery. You should have said something right there. Come along. Let's go inside. When Alan was talking over him, <laughs> we were talking over both of them. <laughs> well, here's the entrance to the office wing. That's for staff only. You were impressed by my trophies when you first arrived here. I do love to hunt. The great outdoors, man versus nature. It's wonderful stuff. Pretty damn wonderful, yeah. <laughs> Yes, it is. Scary, scary, scary. <laughs> Emerson. <laughs> I'm a real bad dream, mister. You should be afraid of me. Don't want to run into me in the night, that's for sure. Please, Emerson. Mr. Wake is confused enough as it is. Yeah, you'd like me to go away so you won't be scared. But you can't just decide what kind of dream you have or when you have it. Emerson. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Boo. <laughs> That's Emerson. We're actually making some progress with him, I'm happy to say. He works on 
NEO games. It's trash, of course, but it does involve some small creative effort, which makes him receptive to my therapeutic methods. No kidding. <laughs> I like Emerson. <laughs> Dude at the end. La, 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 you might have noticed. On the right hand side. You've been writing as a part of the therapy. As soon as you feel up to it, you should continue. We're gonna talk about that one. Oh, there we go. My rheumatism's killing me. There's a storm coming. Oh, what a storm. I hope it wipes this place off the face of the earth. And these two are the Anderson brothers, Odin and Tor. They had a, how should I put this? A heavy metal band in the 70s and 80s called Old Gods of Asgard. They even adopted new first names to complete the image of Viking gods. After the band broke up, they lived on a farm nearby. They are, well, in advanced stages of dementia. They're well cared for, TLC and all that. There's nothing more that can be done. I'm afraid that the rock and roll lifestyle has left its mark. No, that won't do. I'm so sorry to cut this short. For now, Alan, the power has been acting up. I'd better go check on it. We'll continue this soon. Meanwhile, when you feel up to it, return to your room and try to write. It really is for the best. Don't you think? I'd like to bash his head in with a hammer. Oh, he'd love to fish out our secrets, but he has no clue. He's not crazy enough. <laughs> not crazy like us, Sonny. Yeah! Being ah. crazy is a requirement, Sonny. Who else could understand the world when it's like this? It takes crazy to know crazy. That's the sanest thing I've heard in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Say, you're all right, Tom. Hey, we like him, don't we, bro? He's got to go to the farm. The Anderson farm. Valhalla. We wrote it all down, lest we forget. A crash course. All you need to know to get your head right. You need to find the message. Here, Sonny, here's something for you. Gave me a rash. But I kept it safe from these bastards. My head was clearing up, or according to Hartman, I was sinking back into the fantasy. I was convinced he was lying to me about everything. Crazy or not, the Andersons made more sense. Tom, you got any booze on you? Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> Sorry, we have guys. a stash of the special stuff at the farm. Our own formula. Local ingredients. Medicine clears your head right up. Makes you remember like moonbeams on the brain. Oh, I just noticed leather patches on the elbows. That's not very <laughs> rock and roll. Tom just lost is all. Baba Yaga got to him too, the damn witch. She used us all, taken from all of us. Took my thunder, the witch. And my ravens, what was, what were they? <laughs> Memory and thought, the hag. She took something from you too, didn't she? That's what she does. Um, we're better off. This place, the lake, it gives you power. If you're a creator, an artist, 
I'm gone. Nightmare shifted in their sleep in the darkness of the lake. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. She makes sure it comes out twisted and wrong. Just ask the lamp lady. She knows what happened to that other rider. She's been using you, boy. And you let her. You went and opened the door for her, didn't you? Now, now, it was already open a crack. And whose fault is that? We're morally corrupt, disease-ridden, old and stupid. Doesn't mean he had to open it all the way, goddammit. <laughs> ah, yeah, goddammit. <laughs> What's wrong with you? So tired. Built the farm close to the lake. A place of power. We had parties there, man. You... You should go there and have a party. I was like, okay. That Bob Balder threw the amp through the window, hit that a hippie chick in the back of the head, 15 stitches of a concussion. Bob's dead now. Leukemia. Stitches, snitches, and narcs, man. Bad scene. I am tired, man. <laughs> so tired. I... I, uh... I want to go home. Zane could feel the poems taking form, shaping things. As he experimented, he imagined he could almost feel the power surging through the keys of the typewriter. It exhilarated him, but there was fear too. If not for his young assistant, Emil, he would have given it up, but Emil convinced him otherwise. He too had a way with words. charge now and I don't want to disappear. My nightmare is the publisher people who want to make a contribution so they can say they made a contribution and then we end up with mullets in there because they think mullets are funny but it wasn't supposed to be about mullets and now it's about mullets and when it's in slow motion they call it mullet time because the numbers came back from marketing that mullet time is the hook we needed to go big in the target demographic. And they're not even kidding. They say it all like serial killers with straight faces and smiles. My nightmare is the writers who want to make everything from the characters to the toasters talk, talk, talk all the time and express their feelings so they won't shut up. And the writers won't shut up either because they have feelings too. And I have to listen to them because they're not scared of me. And everyone should just shut up, shut up, shut up. But I don't see nightmares pairs anymore because I'm too scary for them. I take two pills every morning and one with every meal and four when I go to bed and that makes me the scariest nightmare of all. <laughs> what did he do to that place? It looks like he tipped over all the couches. I guess he's scared. I guess so. <sighs> oh, hello. I've painted you. Okay. I was just struck by inspiration a couple of days ago. Dr. Hartman wanted me to paint landscapes, and that's what I was doing. But now I've been doing these things, a lot of them. The images just keep coming. Dr. Hartman likes them. He has them in his office. Yeah? He's very proud of me. He says I'm getting much better. I think I'm getting better. Well, I guess I'd better start wrapping this up. The storm is almost here. Look at that. I'd hate to be out there tonight. 
I'm trying to hide the fact that the island is there. <laughs> the cabin's not on it, but the island is there. I've compared it to other gameplays, um, and it wasn't there, so it was either something that comes up when you beat the game, or it was just a glitch. I don't know. The within side. We'll see that again. Mm -hmm. Hey, Wake, why don't you humor Dr. Hartman and give the writing a shot, huh? Typewriter's in your room. You can get to your room by those stairs, Wake. Something's wrong. I'm not myself. It's hard to think that there's a shadow inside my head. I can only focus on writing. Everything else is a blur. I'm trapped in this cabin. Have been for days, but it's always dark outside. My editor is real. I saw her again. She's not human. It's not human. A dark presence is wearing the old woman's face. She was covered in clinging shadows. There's a hole in her chest where her heart should be. I think I've made a horrible mistake. I don't think I'm any closer to saving Alice. It's been lying to me, using me to get the story it wants, and the story will come true. You better do something about it. That's all right. <laughs> I just keep thinking about Ilka Vili and those commercials. <laughs> <laughs> He just, in the remaster, he looks more like him, but like the first game, like the original game, no. <laughs> he looks stoned. He does look stoned the whole time, and he's, yeah, he doesn't even look like Ilkay. Hartman <laughs> wanted me to write. I knew I couldn't, but I figured I should just play along for now. It was the only thing I could do with Nurse Birch watching me like a hawk. But I keep thinking about those commercials, um... Hartman had mentioned that the power had been acting Is up. It? Maybe that was the reason for the generator and the work light on the balcony. The generator hadn't been activated, and there was no key. What is it? It's like a cell phone company or something? Something in Finland. It's, what, cell phone internet or whatever? Yeah, yeah I think it was, yeah, <laughs> cell phone. I can't remember the name of it, though. He did a bunch of commercials for them, and they're all really funny, especially yeah. the hockey one. <laughs> I, <like laughs> I posted that, one. that on Twitter. <laughs> that was hilarious. <clears throat> because you can find them on YouTube. They are out there. It's just funny to see because like, he has like the same hair that you know they gave Alan Wake. Everything looks the same. It's pretty awesome. The white glare of the blank page in front of me hurt my eyes. <laughs> My hands began to shake uncontrollably. Hey, Wake, you stay here. I'm gonna go see what's up. You just keep doing what you're doing. Be cool, okay? Rock and roll capital of America. <laughs> I didn't know what the chaos was all about, but it could be my only chance of getting out of here. Oh, afraid of the crazy brothers, are ya? Not so weak now, are we? Hartman kept talking, giving Barry the grand tour, clearly proud of the place. He went on and on about his hunting trophies, and Barry was impressed. But he was here on business. He raised his voice, cut through the monologue. Hey, Hartman, where's Al? Hartman stopped in mid-sentence, annoyed at the interruption. He nodded at the hulking orderly standing nearby. The man smiled and clapped a practice hand on Barry's shoulder. Well, things are unraveling fast, aren't they? Ha, ha, na, ha, ha, ha. Sinclair looked bad. That wasn't a love tap. It's the crazy old fart hit her hard. I'm if she was one of Hartman's it. goons, she had it coming. 
I could get the key to the office wing from well, some time. Come back to her, baby! <laughs> <laughs> they were like about ready to fall asleep five minutes ago. Yeah. The backstage is all yours, Tom. See I had to get destiny. to Hartman's office. He had taken all my manuscript He's pages. Hiding behind there. That's where he'd be keeping them. Come out and face the music, Birch! It's time to pay the piper! Maybe you could come out and beat our wrinkled, adult, diapered asses, Birch, since you're so tough, Birch. <laughs> I had to catch some we of this. We were on the road, man! You think we haven't seen punks like you before, <laughs> mortal <laughs> name? <laughs> Yeah, you better hide, Birch. My wrath will break you. He's probably kidding, Birch. He's got a great sense of humor. Just ask Sinclair. Oh. <laughs> Children of the Elder God, scorch your light upon the dark. <laughs> I wish I had my axe. <laughs> the photo on the wall caught my attention. In it, the clinic staff was standing outside the lodge. I knew the man next to Hartman. He was the kidnapper. Hartman had been playing me all along. What a fucker. <laughs> Seriously. You don't do that to people. Okay, werewolves. Those get mentioned a lot. Especially in control. The markings on the tape said they were recordings Hartman had made at the sessions with his patients. I saw Alice's name on one of them. For a moment, I couldn't breathe right. Hartman wasn't happy. Mott could see it in his eyes. He quickly lowered his own. He had made a mess of it, and he knew it. The shame of failure was hard to bear. He hadn't expected Wake to say he needed more time. And he blurted out two days, less than Wake had asked for to show him who was in charge. But that wasn't part of Hartman's plan. It's a good reference. I've used it a lot. Cult of the tree, maybe? Yeah. Looks like a cult member. I think so. I think some of these pictures are definitely foreshadowing. There's a lot you can tease out of them if you just look at them long <laughs> enough. <laughs> right. But I think that one is supposed to be Alan. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like a typical taken. Now, Mrs. Wake, can you tell me about Alan's problems? He's more and more out of control all the time. The parties, he's so angry all the time. He's getting violent. He's. Do you mean with you? No. And now it's all gonna go to hell. 
But you don't ever say this. No. No. I've tried, but he's not listening. He's too deep in his own problems, always going on about something else. I'm so afraid I'm going to lose him, and we're not even talking anymore. He doesn't let me in anymore. He just keeps me in the dark. I'm so alone here, even when he's home. Please help me, Doctor, because I'm at my wit's end. Well, if you can just get him here, I'll absolutely do my very best. Yeah, but Doctor, you need to be careful with him. He's not just going to listen to you and cooperate. He's the most stubborn man I've ever met. Well, I'll be sure to bear that in mind. Hearing her voice, what she was saying made me happy and sick and guilty all at once. Worst of all, I recognized the words. The phone call from her. It had been a cut-up of this. Just a recording. Rudolph Lane's case is interesting. He was completely blocked, and frankly, I was about to discard him as useless. However, once Wake arrived and started writing, something changed in Rudolph. He's producing extraordinary work, increasingly dark pieces. Unfortunately, he doesn't respond to direction at all, and it's my belief that he's not so much a creator as an illustrator, perhaps, a recorder of sorts. I hadn't considered the existence of such a role before, let alone its implications, but the paintings he has produced are informative. At least he's easily controlled and useful. I wish I could say the same about Wake. It's frustrating that the best subjects are always so damn difficult to deal with. I'm buying that. I was tailing Wheeler, and this is the only place he could have gone. That means Wake is probably there too! Agent Nightingale. This is private property, and I will not allow you to disturb my patients. Yeah? I can get a warrant. How are your fragile little patients like that? <laughs> oh, I'm thoroughly intimidated by your mighty authority now, Agent. Listen, you smug snob. How would you like it if I busted through this gate and knocked you around a little? Agent Nightingale, first of all, I'm recording this conversation, so you might want to watch what you say. Secondly, you're not dealing with a hick now. I know the law, and if you can get a judge to grant a warrant, I'll be glad to cooperate. But you won't get one. Be advised that any further communications with me are to be made through my lawyer. I don't believe this. Good day, Agent. Yeah. How is that even possible? Like, Alice's tape was sitting next to the recorder, mm -hmm. and the recorder wasn't even plugged in. Yeah. Oh, wolves. That oh, picture is important to remember. I'm gonna sue your crazy quack ass to sleep! <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, do you have any idea how much trouble Barry? you Ow! About time! Barry, man, am I glad to see you. We need to get to Hartman's office. It's right next door. You okay? Yeah. I mean, no! The cops found me a Rose's trailer, but they didn't hassle me too much. I'm obviously a victim in this, and I demanded to be treated as such. Or else I'd sue their asses. Speaking of asses, that fed gave me a real hard time, but I had no clue where you were. That guy's crazy, Al. But he let me go, and then I get a call from Hardman, that son of a bitch, who tells me you're here, and I should come pick you up, but when I got here, two goons clobbered me and stuck me in there. What's... What's with the cutout? I stole it from the diner to piss off Rose <laughs> after what she did to us. That'll teach her. Yeah, that's a harsh punishment. Come on, pal, we gotta get going. These were all the pages I had on me. And more. Alan, please. You're sliding back into the... Tell me one more lie, and I'll shoot you in the face. Ah, well, it was worth a shot. Really, Wake, come on. Let's work together on this. You have no idea... Hardman, what... shut up! Barry, get out of here. I'll catch up with you. Get a car. Oh, Al, let's just... Go! Watch the room Wake, that listen to me. Barry goes into. This is a mistake. Don't you see? 
Together we can create something absolutely wonderful with your ability and mine. Before we end, we're going to revisit this scene really quick and show you what we were talking about earlier about the room that Barry goes into and how Alan reacts. So see, he sends Barry into this dark room and he sees it and he takes a moment and he realizes it and he kind of readies himself because it's like he knows this is going to happen. And he, of course, then shoves Hartman out of the way and makes a mad dash for for the door. I don't know. I thought that was kind of like <laughs> his face. <laughs> I, uh, that, that's how I interpreted that part is that he knew that that was coming somehow. Maybe he's done this before, you know, from the, like the time loops or whatever. But, um, in any case, I thought it was interesting that he sent Barry into a completely dark room and then the darkness came and took Hartman away. I don't know, what'd you think? Yeah, I, I kind of got the same impression that when he sends Barry in, he notices the dark room, has a sudden realization. and um... Like he could use that. And like, I'm not trying to say he was summoning the darkness, but you know, who knows? You know, there's a lot we don't know. So we just thought that was cool to point out. And that was it. This is um, the first part of part four, right? We're mm -hmm. going to do it in three and four parts. And um, so, yeah, we hope to see you back soon. Thanks for watching. Darkling Alley, signing out. See ya.